in places seldom visited by men. Only a select few have the expertise and skills to brave this untamed wilderness. Do I look whooped? Because I feel whooped. They're risking it all to chase the most valuable game while helping conservation efforts and forgotten communities to survive. Hunting season has begun. And these men will put it all on the line for the hunts of a lifetime. This is True Magnum TV. True Magnum TV is proudly presented by Western Powders, premium shooting and gun care products. Deep within Central Asia is the country of Tajikistan. Known for its steep and rugged mountains, teeming with peaks that rise over 16,000 feet, it's no wonder it's home to some of the most challenging game species on the planet. It also borders the war-torn country of Afghanistan. The big mountain here, beyond the face of it, where this same river goes through and divides Tajik from Afghanistan. That side of the river is definitely the danger zone. It has been in the last 10 years. Hunting this close to the Afghanistan border is a risk many are not willing to take. But for outfitter and fifth generation Marine, Bo Morgan, hunting the unattainable is just another day on the job. Well, the promised hunting land. Over the last 30 years, I've been hunting all over the planet, and, and not many people get to live the dream. Like, I'm really blessed to be able to do that. While in the Marines, Bo honed his expert shooting skills, becoming a precision sharpshooter and instructor. All the shooting we did in the Marines and those skills come into play all the time in the field. When you find the animal you're after, it feels like you're some kind of hit man. Yeah. I love finding things. Like, I, I pride myself on spending more time behind glass than anybody. Bo is a top-level, record-holding hunter, accepting only 15 to 20 outfitting jobs a year for some of the most exclusive hunts in the world. You have to be prepared on these hunts, coming in and doing the uh, preliminary work, knowing what's here, knowing what the good trophies are gonna be for this area, knowing what the conditions are gonna be, having your client there, and it's gonna just make your hunt be tenfold better. When there's lead flying, there's danger. After years of dedication and planning, Bo is awarded hunting access and landed his first contract for hunting screw-horned goats, also known as markhor, in mountains of Tajikistan's southern border. A year ago, we came over, we pre-scouted, made sure it was viable to, to run clients through here. I got a lot riding on this. It's my first client in this area. I need to have it go smooth. Found it between 2,000 and 12,000 feet in elevation, the markhor is a very distinctive species of wild goat. It is identified by a long white coat and horns that at maturity can grow over five feet in length. Getting a male of this size is a trophy hunter's dream. Home sweet home. I can't wait to get up on that mountain. Upon arrival at base camp, Bo makes a quick sat phone call to check in with his client, John, who is en route from America. How's it going? All right, well, no, no big deal. Don't worry about it. Take care of that, and then uh, on to the next thing. All right, man. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Hunter got tied up, so we're uh, going on to plan B. Uh, got to figure some stuff out here. Situated in the southeast part of the world's second largest continent, Zimbabwe is home to the most dangerous Big Five trophy game. The perfect place for professional outfitter Rob Dunham. I've been organizing and guiding hunts for over 25 years. 
And the feeling you get when you come face to face with an animal that can kill you, that's a hell of a rush. Going from college football to guiding, Rob found a way to relive the glory days every day. And he loves to introduce his clients to the same rush. I'm an adrenaline junkie. It's an adventure of a lifetime. It's dangerous, it's deadly, and there's nothing like it. With over 100 safaris under his belt, Rob has become a go-to guy when it comes to hunting the world's most dangerous game. Hunting in exotic countries is a hands-on deal. We get into the trenches, it gets dangerous, it gets dirty, but I'm with them all the time. Today, Rob and his team are in new territory deep in the hellishly hot Zimbabwe savanna to find a herd of Cape buffalo. This is day one of a seven-day safari, and I've partnered again with a contract PH, Fidelis Muchenje. He gets all the paperwork and permits. I bring the clients. It's a win-win for both of us. In Africa, lands and animals are protected by the government and is highly regulated. Any mistake out here and Rob's partnership could be over. On this safari, I brought Canadian outfitter and my client, Kirk Sharp. We're looking for buffalo. Our goal is 40 inches. That's the magical number that everyone looks for. It took me three safaris before I got my first one. Hopefully he has better luck than I did. Now, Kirk doesn't know what a 40 inch buffalo looks like and how cool it is face to face, but I do. A highly robust species, the Cape buffalo are a member of the big five game and are highly sought after in trophy hunting. When water is scarce on the savanna, the Cape Buffalo will form massive herds in search of hydration. Rob hopes to find one of these herds to stalk within shot range of a trophy bull. Look right there. There they are. Look at oh. all these things. Look like, at What a beautiful herd here. I mean, we're seeing the tail end of 300 animals. That's very bad. There could be 15 shooters in here, right? We didn't get all dressed up for nothing. So go there. If you go there, they're oh, moving above, this. Yeah, okay. So we go in front of them. So we choose where we are in front. Getting out in front of a herd of this size can be very difficult. It can take hours. And in this heat, it can get over 120 degrees. And I need to make sure my client Kirk is up for this. This is, this is one of those times where we've got to make sure we got water and everything because we could leave and we might not be back for four hours. I could say this could be one of those that turn into a marathoner, you know. Yeah. Okay, keep down. True Magnum TV is brought to you by Cooper Firearms of Montana, Hornady, Eberly Stock, True Magnum. Global Rescue, and by Jonas Brothers of New York. Back in Tajikistan, without a hunter, outfitter Bo Morgan is putting Plan B into action. John's flight's delayed from Istanbul to Dushan Bay, so I think what the best thing to do is uh, get after it, do some scouting before he gets here. It's going to shorten his hunt up by a day, and it's, these markor aren't coming to us. We got to go find them and, and we need it every day so we'll, we'll get after it until he arrives. Ranging in sheer cliffs and narrow cut valleys, finding a trophy male in this wilderness is not an easy task. In order to be successful at this, we have to rely on the local people and we have to find the right animal. So it's a collaboration of those two things that we all work together and make this come together to meet our clients' expectations. I don't see that. What? I don't see any males at all. Maybe there is all the male you mm -hmm. see behind. With so much on the line, Bo has brought international hunting partner Renault to help. This being a new area, I just want Renault here on this first hunt. It makes it a you know, second set of eyes and makes it a, a good, clean thing. Uh, we, we don't have room for mistakes in this. Got too much invested in this deal right now. Outfitting is all about reputation. So every hunt bow contracts must be a success. Failure is not an option. But sometimes the efforts are rewarded in ways you never expect. 
Renault, Renault, snow leopard. Never seen one, never seen a snow leopard. Very rare animal, very discreet, very complicated to see them. When it has value for these people to leave the animals alone, the Marcord population comes back up, then the snow leopards have something to eat, and then all the animals' population goes up. It's part of why we're here with our clients. Their dollars goes to the community and supports all this, so it's, it's part of the thing. It's, it goes hand in hand. It's awesome. It's late, and I need to get back down to the rig and go see if the hunter made it. <clears throat> I hope John made it. This doesn't work without a hunter. Over in Utah sits one of the top trophy elk units in the world. Only a handful are allowed to hunt the forested high country of this majestic and rugged terrain every year. Having guided, outfitted, or arranged over 4,000 hunts for his clients, James Bryan isn't always on trigger. But having drawn one of the most coveted tags in the United States, even business takes a back seat. When you draw this tag, you just put everything on hold. It feels like all my buddies back home know I got this tag, so it's either a monster or nothing. When I told my wife I was going to be living in Utah for a month to elk hunt, she, uh, she kind of put the kibosh to that and said, no, you've got a week, so you better find one of your hunting buddies over there to help you out. So we'll meet up with them here shortly, and the hunt will begin. In a normal year, I'm responsible for setting up four or 500 hunts for other people. This week, it's about getting back to my roots and keeping the thrill of the hunt alive. With over 25 years of experience, James was born into hunting, spending every second on public lands honing his skills. You know, I've been fortunate to be able to turn my passion into a career. And when done right, that also means conservation of species. And that's the bigger picture. Due to his passion and love for outdoors and wildlife, James is now considered one of the country's most successful outfitters in the business. I love challenge. I choose hunts for the challenge. Can I do it? Can I make it? Can I survive it? And as a consultant, I have to do the hunts that I sell. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. It's, it's not legit. James has just one week to get his trophy, so he's contracted Utah resident and colleague Brady Larson to get the job done. How are you? Good, how you doing? You made it. Too bad of a drive. Not too bad. Long one day. This is Casey. Casey. Casey's James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You guys are taking this serious. Yeah. Brady's a big time guide in Utah, but he, he's not been in this exact area before. So we're scratching each other's back. He's going to help me get my bull. I'm going to help him scout for a rifle hunter he's got coming in next week. Good old fashioned public land elk hunting for the bow. Hopefully, they start bugling. Otherwise, we got to get on our hands and knees and start crawling <laughs> through this crap. Rocky Mountain elk are one of the largest land animals in the United States and can weigh in at over 730 pounds. This time of year, the males are in rut, bugling and gathering cows into harems of 10 to 20 females. When threatened, males will battle to the death and James is hoping to get in the middle of it. That's the best sound in all of the wild right there. This hunt reminds me of when I first started hunting. Nothing but the bow in my hand and the drive to succeed. Back in Zimbabwe, after five hours of careful maneuvering, Rob and his team have successfully made it around the herd of Cape Buffalo to the high ground. That was a lot done. That took a lot done. These guys did a great job. I mean, we've got them spread out over 200 yards. Normally, they're in the if we screw this up and got to keep on them, they'll be in a tight, tight group. It'd be hard to get the bulls on the outside. Right. Well, something best than a leg down. 
So we need to sneak to that green tree. Having spotted some large bulls, the hunting party makes a plan to carefully approach. There's some just giants at the back of this herd. Cape buffalo have been referred to as black death or the devil's cattle, and it's really because of their unpredictable nature. They'll charge when they're unprovoked, and when you get into a herd situation or a group of bulls, dug boys, the old bulls by themselves, it's the ones you don't see that'll kill you. You see, there's a, that bow which is laying. Yeah, yeah. Laying. He's laying facing that way. Second last bow. Yeah. Two, two to the left. I see him. He's the biggest bull, I think. Yeah. You guys just take Kirk up to this next tree. Yes. Yes. Although there are over a dozen good trophy animals here, Rob calls the bull he wants Kirk to shoot. In situations like these, for conservation purposes, your goal is to get one of the oldest trophy bulls out of the herd. They're usually done breeding by then, and it's likely the one that we're looking for. Can you see the second one? Yeah. Maybe be ready. You might stand up. Can you see yeah. uh, the shoulder? No, no, I can't. can't see the shoulder. I can't see the back of his neck. In the back of his head, that's it. Ah, no, do not take chances. No, 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 no. Uh, no yes, no, no, no. want it to, to, to stand up. So, uh, it's just a bad angle. Yes, it's, it's not good. Come on, get up, get up. In the mountains of Tajikistan, Bo Morgan's delayed client finally arrived at camp in the middle of the night, but the shuffled flight schedule resulted in lost luggage. Boarded in San Francisco, it was checked all the way to Duchenne Bay. Mm -hmm. So what they, they did make us uh, get new boarding passes on that flight. That's it. Mm -hmm. There are are you? Good Hi, you. I'm fine, thank you. That the difficult trip? Oh, you know, not <laughs> normal, but. Um, as you probably are aware, I don't have my rifle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or boots. The boots? I have to check. With Nine and a half. Mm -hmm. so, uh, plan B. No boots, no rifle. First client in this area. This is not shaping up very well. Back in Zimbabwe, Rob and his team have managed to get his client, Kirk, within 50 yards of a massive bull. Wait, but there's wait, a problem. It's just a bad angle. Yes. Here he goes. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Yes. Load again, load again. We got one more. Just reload. Next time on True Magnum TV. Wow, now that shouldn't have been there. When the hunter's in the airport and his eyes are poking out of his head, and people have no idea what's at stake. That's smaller. smaller. He's looking this way. Good. Yeah. It felt good. Yeah. I hit him hard. It's funny how you can go from the top of the world to the bottom real quick. Here, what is it?